Rise Up Radio. Our mission is simple. To connect. Inspire. Impact. Transform. We will connect with our city's people and businesses. Inspire all of us to achieve our dreams. Transform the city by focusing on the resilience of our people. And positively impact all who live and work here. Rise Up believes our city is a city on the rise. And all of us need to broadcast just how truly amazing this city is. This is Tom Chester, your host for Rise Up Radio and Business Innovators Radio Network. We are here today in Dallas, Texas, talking with our very special featured guest, Susan Hamilton. Susan is the founder and the CEO of Offbeat Business Media. She is on a crusade. And that is why I like to think of her and call her the Wonder Woman of the Justice League. Her (laughs) crusade is taking local business, local family business information to a whole new level. By meeting the needs of the local family business, we are here today to promote a two-day event happening in Fort Worth, Texas on August the 30th through the 31st at the Birchman Baptist Church, located at 9100. North Normandale Street in Fort Worth, Texas. The event will be starting at 8 a.m. It is entitled Developing a Bulletproof Mind and a Bulletproof Heart. Susan Hamilton will MC the event and Offbeat Business Media is covering the presentation and the interviews. Susan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. It's been one of those mornings, hadn't it, for you? It's Monday. (laughs) It's a Monday. We love it. Uh, Susan, before we talk about the event, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Offbeat Business Media, and how you are helping local family-owned businesses. Well, when we really identify that local family business today, uh, we can can recognize that 80% of American micro to small business tend to be family-owned businesses of nine employees or less. So when we're talking about the local family business community, that's really the majority of businesses out there, and largely this group probably wouldn't consider themselves uh, powerful, influential. A lot of them don't consider themselves profitable, and we want to change that because this is the largest group, and they're just a foundational fixture. They're the backbone of the United States of America, so we have a very patriotic uh, perspective here, and we know that the preferred information uh, gathering for this segment of the population is is internet. So using television, radio, podcasts, and magazine uh, ways of, of media to, to reach them is really the most effective way, and it's a preferred way to do that. Uh, so let's get in there and let's get in there strong and bring them the types of programming that really builds up this group. And in the meanwhile, gives us this wonderful opportunity to dangle the needs of the community uh, in front of them because I believe that we all went into this uh, for specific reasons, right? We thought we could make a difference in our communities with our businesses and with our, our profitable, influential business. Well, then we can, right? Maybe exactly. it's a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you what, I think you've got this wrapped up. You have your own radio station, you have your own TV station, and you also have a magazine. I think you're taking talk media to a whole new level. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's certainly our intention. Susan, let me ask you this question. Why is this mission so important to you? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'm not alone in that. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with the wives or spouses of uh, our first responders. And I remember one time as a young mother, I was across the street from a lady whose husband was uh, a firefighter. And I remember watching her uh, with her glass of wine, listening to the scanner on many occasions, really worried about uh, what's her husband doing and is he going to come home and making sure I understood that, wow, she's not sure that he's going to come home. And those are situations that happen a lot. You know, they, they, they act like it's nothing at all. But, you know, I know their wives. <laughs> I know their husbands. I know that we've got uh, situations out there where the family is concerned. You know, they go out uh, on these violent drug calls. Uh, they need to subdue and control situations that, that we can't, right? And it's a horrifying thing to not be sure that an officer might treat someone behaving violently with caution. You know, in our nation, people of color are concerned that skin color alone can escalate their vulnerabilities. We've got language barriers, mental health issues. 
people who might look like they're on drugs when they may only have a disability. And what we're doing here is, is struggling to communicate, but it matters so much because, you know, we're going, we're grocery shopping with the spouses of these families. Uh, you know, our kids are going to school together. We're passing our officers in, in our neighborhoods and communities and I often don't realize that, if, especially if they're working even those late shifts, Tom, uh, they don't necessarily have anyone to talk to about the things that they've seen. You know, if you and I were exposed to a traumatic situation, we would most likely need to go through some kind of a therapy, some type of a, a scenario that helps us deal with what we just dealt with, right? Absolutely. So when you're a, a, uh, an officer, a firefighter, a security guard, uh, you might go through multiple uh, scenarios like that in a day, in a week, and really be expected to perform as usual within 24 to 48 hours back on the job with, with very little uh, wait, uh, crisis training for how you overcome that kind of trauma. And we want to just do a better job. We're seeing a high rate of suicide in our first responders. They're, they're not necessarily dealing with these things uh, well. And we want to give them the very, very best information and just love them. They're the people that are taking care of us and our families. We need to give them our very, very best. Yeah, and actually you've seen with your own eyes some of, some of these officers respond to violent drug calls. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I have. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, it, you know, like I said, to subdue and control situations that they, they have to come onto, they can't necessarily tell what they're going to be walking into, what they're going to be exposed to. You know, drugs out there today, Tom, they can't even smell them. If an officer pulls over a car because they're uh, driving erratically or they've got suspicions, right, they don't necessarily know. Used to be you could smell the odors of a drug outside of a car. They don't necessarily know that until they walk right up. And those things can cause, those, cause people today to be so violent and so aggressive. And it's very different out there today. And, yes, yes, I, I see it on a, on a regular basis uh, as, a, as a volunteer in the prison system and, and recognizing Wow, we've got we've got a lot of stuff we're dealing with today in today's environment that's very different and very escalated. Yeah, and Blue Dragon International Consultants, I think they speak directly about these kinds of things that you've seen. Is that correct? Absolutely. That's what I love about these fellows. I'll tell you what, they, we've got some of the uh, the biggest hearts in this community. They've seen so much. I mean, they've got so much history. It's, it's, it's pretty doggone impressive every time I think about it. But they, from retired uh, FBI special agents to uh, SEALs and uh, gang, uh, uh, violent gang uh, heads of those, of those uh, response agencies, I mean, the stuff that they've seen and the, the types of training that they've had operating at that higher level, uh, a lot of them say that, you know what, we're not getting it at the lower level, at the first responder level where they're right out there on the call. But what would happen if we brought the types of things that they needed to respond faster to an, a critical situation, to an active killer scenario, uh, and then also to give them what they need to recover post-trauma? And we really need to spend a lot of time focused. As a matter of fact, that's why uh, this conference is called Developing a Bulletproof Mind and a Bulletproof Heart. It is about recognizing, you know, what do we need to do to cut these things off at the pass, right? How do we respond quickly it, when a situation is, is coming on? I think we're past that point of wondering, you know, will it happen? Those, we need to be prepared as though it will. We've seen enough of it, and I think our communities are really screaming for that. Um, so bringing this type of training right to the community, right to, you know, Tom, this is very interesting because not only are the Blue Dragon consultants going to be speaking on a stage and training officers and first responders uh, in every area, right? But they're also going to be right. talking to school administrators and pastors and the general public because we need to know what it looks like to work together 
when a scenario happens? How do we make sure we are operating in the officer's best interest, in our own best interest? How do we help facilitate? How do we get out of the way, right? A lot of times we think we may know how to respond, but we don't. And so I think it's going to really help uh, build that community bridge between our first responders and the community sitting side by side in comfortable chairs over at Birchman Baptist over off of 30 in Fort Worth. I mean, they, they, they're really set up to, to handle that and to handle it comfortably for two days of just this incredible training. So the, bull, uh, the Blue Dragon, uh, this presentation, I think, is a series, and you've called it Developing a Bulletproof Mind and a, a Bulletproof Heart. Uh, is, is that a kickoff, I understand, in Fort Worth? And tell me yes. a little bit more about this event. Wonderful. So this is a kickoff event. We're going to be taking this uh, on a six-city tour across the United States of America to make sure we're impacting every community with the best training that we can op offer our officers, our firefighters, security guards, independent school districts, uh, pastors. What can we do to ensure that the very best outcome happens in the event we are c confronted and faced with an active uh, killer scenario in our public venues, our schools, our churches. You know, these guys, Tom, um, they say uh, the high-level military uh, background in them, they will tell you, you know, we've got men and women overseas that are protecting the United States of America, we need to do a better job of taking care of their kids and their family here on home, right? So right. that's really where these guys are going. Uh, and, and you'll be hearing so much of that. What can we do to, to do a better job? And you know what? I've heard a lot of it. It's excellent. This is excellent information. So they'll be showing uh, everything from what do we, how do we respond faster to an ISIS threat, to a terrorist threat in our community. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. They're going to train. They're going to prepare. They're going to assist and encourage and even repair the men and women who fight fires, fight terror, and run into the danger when everyone else runs away. And, and basically this event, I think, how many, how many people can you have in this event? How many seats do you yeah. all have there now? No, wonderful. So we'll be able to seat 2,500 people, and we are inviting the entire North Texas, uh, like, and as I mentioned earlier, specifically so we can get people sitting side by side and really understanding what type of training is out there and what are those uh, scenarios that we need to be considering. With Blue Dragon, give us a little bit more information about Blue Dragon Consultants. We keep mentioning them, but tell me, tell me exactly uh, some more information about this organization, these consultants, and, and what they do. And basically, you know, like you've already said, I mean, you know, to train, prepare, assist, encourage, and re uh, the men and women who fight fires, fight terror, and run into danger, even when everyone else wants to run away. So Blue Dragon, I mean, that, that was interesting. What is Blue Dragon Consultants? So Blue, the Blue Dragon International Consultants are a bunch of fellows that got together uh, a little over a year ago. They're headquartered in Wichita, Kansas. They exist specifically to offer that high-level training and recovery resources to local police and fire departments, uh, also the security details. And as I mentioned, those independent school districts throughout America, in addition to the services that they offer at a federal and an international. Uh, so in this support that they're offering, and by the way, spouses of these first responders can actually get in free. We are having a the, – the focus is on restoration. The focus is on how do we ensure – the success for our, our communities. Their heart is in it. You know, uh, the, the founder, Paul Vick, uh, just, he's one of, of many, the, all these fellows will tell you the same thing. The amount of uh, suicides and addictions and problems that they're seeing within these, uh, within the forest, it's, it's painful. It's painful. A lot of times it's taken these families off guard. They really don't they didn't see it coming because they keep the, that stuff all bottled up inside of them. They don't necessarily have somebody to talk with because they can't always be bringing home these traumatic scenarios to their family, right? And they protect them. Well, the Blue Dragons have seen this stuff firsthand in their own lives and their own family. And it's one of the reasons that they've learned to respond the way they have. Uh, instead of isolation, you know, how, how do we do a better job of 
communicating because this officer, this firefighter, this security guard, Tom, they're going to, it's not the last time they're going to be dealt a uh, uh, hand like that. They're going to have to be running in to the danger many, many times over in the course of their career. How do we help them do that faster? How do we help them recover faster? So they really, the Blue Dragon International Consultants really lead the charge for faster response uh, to massacres at schools and churches. They offer high-level training for police and firefighters in, in tactical approaches and better recovery post-trauma. Absolutely. Who are going to be the speakers at this event? I understand, man, you have a long list of fantastic people with a ton of knowledge, experience in just what we're talking about. Who, who, are, who are some of these and who are these speakers? Excellent, excellent. So Lieutenant Dave, Colonel Dave Grossman is going to be here, uh, and he specifically talks about that bulletproof mind. Let me tell you something about uh, Colonel Grossman. I, I had an opportunity to uh, listen to him uh, a couple weeks ago when he was over here in Hearst, and what an amazing uh uh, presentation that he offers. He gets, the, he gets the entire audience involved and helping them recognize, wow, how, what could we have seen before this ever happened, right? How could we have, have uh, uh, interceded? How, what, what did we need to recognize immediately? What should have put the hair up on the back of our neck, right? And so he's well known throughout the nation. He's a, uh, a, an authority and, uh, and a respected expert in this field as an uh, Army Ranger and many, many high levels of, of training. This fella, uh, it's just amazing what he's doing. We've also got Tom Ziegler, who is the son of the well-known Zig Ziegler here in the, in the DFW area and an international speaker. We've got retired Sergeant Richard Morris, who was head of the Violent uh, Gang Task Force in Fort Worth for like 35 years, 10th degree black belt. Uh, very, very active in the community to this day uh, to make sure that the officers are uh, in, their, in their mobility, that they're t making good choices even with the way that they use their body. This man is a genius to, to help people understand it. Uh, Sheriff Bill Wayburn from Tarrant County is going to be there. Uh, the Garland police officer, Greg Stevens, do you remember that story uh, a couple years back when um, – we had two ISIS terrorists uh, that came out at the Curtis Caldwell Center in Garland, Tom. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I heard a bit. I read something about that. What was that yeah, about? Yeah, so, he, well, he was able to stop these uh, ISIS, mur uh, ISIS terrorists who were intent on murder. I mean, that was the whole reason that they were there. And uh, he was able to recognize some things. That, and his guard went up. He knew exactly how to execute it. And when you hear what he came away with to teach the other officers, oh, Tom, it's all about training. And anyone who's been successful in this space will tell you the same thing. We think our officers are getting trained before they get out there. They really don't have a whole lot of training before they are out on the field. And when they're out there, they're, you know, all of us have to have continuing education in our careers. And so they're responsible for having, for getting that themselves. You know what? We're busy, aren't we? And just like in, in business, how a lot of times the lifestyles, the life happens, you know, we may not be getting that. Well, I'll tell you what, um, when you hear from Officer Greg Stevens, you start recognizing that um, it's just a, an amazing amount of information that he can bring to you that's specifically about the training that he put himself under. He, do you know he never even had to shoot anyone before that experience? After all those years, I mean, it's quite an amazing story, so I'm looking forward to hearing from him. He actually got the 2016 mm -hmm. Presidential Medal of Valor for stopping him. Uh, that, wow. that, that was pinned on him by uh, President Barack Obama. Greg Abbott was there. Uh, we had, you know, it was a big deal. And then I also think you'll have uh, James Farley, and there's attorney Mark Jones, and uh, a former FBI agent. Is, is that Paul Vick I read? Yeah, that's, that's Paul. So Colonel James Farley, uh, he helps us understand what's going on with the, the greatest threats of concern today. A uh, very high-level uh, fella, and, you know, he's, he's actually – been an ISIS survivor. Very few people can say that. Uh, so how fascinating to hear from him and hear him talk about uh, his experiences and what he's noticing out in the field and why we need to pay very close attention to that for the protection of our communities. 
it's a big, big deal. And of course, attorney Mark Jones, um, high profile attorney that is helping people understand, wow, there's a civil liability here on some of these levels. What do we need to know so that not only are we stopping these incidents, but we can make sure that they are actually going to go to court and be dealt with if they survive at all, right? What do we need to do to make sure we're dealing well with that scenario than with, the, with those, uh, uh, the hands that were dealt if we're actually involved in a crisis? So those are things a lot of people don't think about. So to have everybody together on one stage, oh, my goodness, Tom, it is going to be quite a time. You're going to be able to hear all these different topics that will engage the audience and have them, uh, really understanding what this new scenario in America looks like and how to be successful in spite of it, how to deal with it. You know, Susan, it's amazing, even just being on the radio and, you know, not being people seeing you. And, man, I, I hear your passion. I hear your concern. I hear your love. I hear everything right through your voice. And I think one of the things that talks a lot about what you're doing, what they are doing, and, and I'm, I'm going I'm to read something here for you. This is a quote, honestly, that was talking about you and your team from Paul Vick, Blue Dragon co-founder, and Dale Vick, his brother. Let me quote this. The team at Offbeat Business Media are passionate about the mission, according to Blue Dragon co-founder Paul Vick. They're professional, focused on the client's end objective, enthusiastic, with a dedicated staff and a first-rate studio. Offbeat Business Media is a very professional source for the truth. Getting the word out there on these revelant issues and how to combat adversity these days is critical. Susan Hamilton and her team do a great job of that every day. And that was actually quoted by his brother, Paul v uh, Delvick. You know, and Susan, I, we hear that, and I think the audience and everybody else out there are going to want to attend this event. You know, I, I, I'm already on the edge of my seat to be there, and it's not That's just not. for police officers and firefighters. It's, you know, no. it's for people like me that need to understand all this. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who is actually welcome to attend, and, and are there special uh, incentives for uh, police officers? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, officers can, and first responders can get in for $99. As a matter of fact, the local business community can even sponsor an officer's ticket and, or maybe even a department or a unit if they're able to do that. But let's get these guys out there to that training and be a part of it. As a matter of fact, we can even get uh, some businesses are going to want to be a part of the founder circle. The founder circle is going to be a group of businesses that actually go with us where their logos and their brands and goes with us, go with us everywhere on this six city tour across the nation to be known as somebody that's stepping up into this space to Im to improve our communities in this area. Yet we want everyone to be experiencing this type of education. Uh, this is it's something that's vital for our officers, vital for our firefighters and security, but it's also vital for our independent school districts. It's vital for our city council. That public venues that are at are often targeted. But well, what do we to know so that when these vendors come to uh, to to uh, sell their wares in the community, well, what can they trust, right? What do they what do they need to know? What works? What doesn't? So we yes, we're inviting the entire general population get over there and understand what it looks like. Start paying closer attention to the very real scenarios that our communities are facing, so that we can do a better job of that. And by the way. Spouses, if I did not mention this earlier, but I think I did, spouses of our first responders get to get in free with that $99 ticket. Uh, general, uh, general admission tickets are $169, and uh, we do encourage people to hurry up and get in on that as soon as possible. And, and by the way, the officers are going to be able to get what's called TECO credit. TECO and post credit is available uh, when they go to bdic.net and get registered. And uh, so every ounce of, of thought <laughs> and preparation has gone into this training to make sure it is absolutely an exemplary event uh, that, that loves our officers and really does what it needs to do in the community to build that bond. Build that bridge and, and pull our communities together for a stronger, safer America. 
you know, I, I understand that this might not be appropriate for children. Uh, Ooh, that's so true. I think y'all picked the days uh, to work around that, didn't you? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is going to be held on a, a Thursday and Friday before Labor Day weekend, and it is not appropriate for children. We're going to be covering things that, uh, you know, they may, that may not be the best thing for them to hear especially children of officers and firefighters, you know, of course we respect that. That's not something they're even coming home and talking about, right, with their very own families for the course of the day. So, no, we wouldn't consider this appropriate for children. Uh, however, uh, that, that should be made so much easier by the fact that school now is, will be in session uh, in North Texas on the Thursday and Friday prior to Labor Day weekend. So, like, like I said, all thought uh, has been put into the preparation of this to make it as easy as possible for our officers uh, and our first responders and military and security guards and pastors and administrators on as many levels as we can to attend this event uh, with ease. Yeah, so, hey, listen out there, parents and everything. Get your kids on the bus, get them to school, and the event starts at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning. Uh, the thing is, you know, hey, this is something you'll want to hear about because we always talk about school shootings and massacres and things like that are happening. Now your kids tuck them away that morning, get in here and listen to this fantastic uh, event with these, these speakers that are beyond belief. I really, really, really am impressed with the lineup. Uh, Susan, how can they get in touch with you? Wonderful. Uh, they can reach out to me at Susan at OffBeatBusiness.com. Of course, all uh, vendor space for information, for pricing, to find out how, what, what we're doing with media and how they can come alongside of us for the, for the legendary uh, founder circle that our, these businesses are going to want to be a part of, 214-714-0495. Okay, again, and 214-714-0495. 0495. And of course, they can register at bbic.net. You know, and, and, and I guess we do really need to emphasize that we really do want local businesses involved and to sponsor the mm -hmm. event and, you know, to get the tickets and get in there and let's support these officers, these first responders. And, you Absolutely. know, that's kind of what, uh, what we do. Uh, to help, you know, as local business owners. You know, Susan, I always want to say thank you so much. You are a pleasure to talk with. And, uh, you know, before I close out the show, I, I wanted to just, and I try to do this by leaving a quote or something, and uh, this one here is from Jane Goodall. Uh, Jane Goodall, I guess everybody understands who she is, and she quotes, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. So thank you for listening. Hey, thank you, Susan, once again. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you. And we're going to say thank you so much, and God bless, and goodbye. Thank you for listening and remember, by working together, we can make a difference in our city.